Hello, everyone. Hope you had a good break or a good day off. Um, well, let's get back to it. So, uh, where are we at? So, we've been talking a lot about finite extensions because we realized that field extensions are, among other things, they make the big vector field a vector space over the small vector field, like uh, we knew before that the complex numbers are a real vector space. Uh, and we say that an extension is finite if there's a, a basis of the big field over the small field, which is just a finite set. So, well, last week I talked a lot about where to find finite extensions. I even told you where to find them all. So the most obvious place to find a finite extension is you take your base field and you add one algebraic element. Um, and then there's the basis of E over F, which is made of powers of alpha. Uh, the, the next most obvious way is to take a bunch of algebraic elements, take 20 of them, uh, which is the second example I have here. And the last thing I showed on Wednesday was that these make up all the examples. So every example of, an, of a finite extension looks like you added a bunch of algebraic elements, a finite set of algebraic elements. Um, and, and this was the last thing we showed. Basically, I mean, a way to find enough algebraic elements is to just take a, a basis as a vector space and those are gonna generate the field. and. They're going to be algebraic because of that thing we showed, I think, on Monday, that every element in a finite extension is algebraic. Algebraic extension is an extension where every element is algebraic over the base field. Um, and, and there's a question that we haven't answered yet. Uh, and the question is, is every algebraic extension finite? The answer is, um, is a very strong no. Uh, we know that, I mean, we know that if you take a finite number of algebraic elements, you get a finite extension. But if you take an infinite number of them, you may or may not have a finite extension. So, for example, this is an exercise in the loop, but I'm going to solve it. Uh, the set of numbers of the, the Let's say we, the, the book says real numbers, doesn't matter, that are algebraic over, over Q um, does not generate a finite extension. Actually, I'm about to show today that they form a field, um, but just by just this set without adding anything else, but. <clears throat> so this form an algebraic extension, which is not finite because there's infinitely many numbers in there and you'll see the dimension has no way of being finite. Uh, even if I take all the, um, all the roots of two, so the, all the nth roots of two, this, um, this is an infinite extension of Q. So let's prove it. Um, the way you prove that, a very good way to prove that something is infinite is by contradiction, just if it was finite, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you there's no way, there's no way this works. Um, Suppose it was a finite extension. Of degree n. If it's finite, it must have a degree. Remember the degree just means that the dimension, the cardinality of the basis. So all of these elements, I'm saying they are in a vector space of dimension a thousand or something. Um, well, what are we going to do? We're going to look at two to the one over n plus one, for example. 
and the degree of this element is going to be too big. Um, so that I feel we already we already showed this. Um, we showed on Wednesday that the degree of alpha over q must divide, so let's call this field E. If you have any elements in a finite extension, the degree um, the degree divides um, the degree of any element divides the degree of the extension. Uh, it's in the notes, but I can just find it faster in the book. Um, Corollary twenty one nineteen. If you have any, well, Oh, wait, no, did I, this is not from the book. Why doesn't the book have this statement? Right, let's look for it. It is, is the, is the first thing I showed on Wednesday on page two of the notes. If you have a finite extension and any element, um, we know any element has to be algebraic. So it's minimal polynomial. It's not just zero, it has some degree. Uh, and that degree must divide the degree of the extension. So that's when you have a finite extension, I'm saying, suppose I have a finite extension, so I can definitely use this if I'm supposing that. So um, the degree of this element, the n plus first root of two must divide um, the degree of the extension, which I just said, let, let me call that n. Um, and that's just the contradiction because the minimal polynomial of the n plus first root of two over q is, I know perfectly well, it's x to the n plus one minus two. Um, it definitely vanishes there and it's the minimal polynomial because it's irreducible by Eisenstein's criterion because every coefficient except for the first one is a multiple of two, but the last one is not a multiple of four. And why did I get so lucky that I could apply Eisenstein's criterion? Uh, I didn't get lucky. I, I got the exercise in the book saying show that all the algebraic numbers have generated a finite extension. And I decided, I chose very carefully a set of elements for which I knew the minimal polynomial. And it would be uh, very easy to, to show that it's irreducible by Eisenstein's criteria. So I made my own luck there. Um, if you get a choice, you make your life as easy as you can. <clears throat> so, uh, the degree of alpha, which is n plus one, must divide n, which is a contradiction. And, and that's it. The contradiction comes from assuming that the extension is finite. And if you wanted to go in, uh, you know, normally proofs but that are not by contradiction are more aesthetic and less. Uh, you'll find professors who tell you to not argue by contradiction um, and they might have a point. Um, you could say this extension is not finite because there are elements in it of any degree that I, that I want. And that is not true for finite extensions. So we didn't have to do it by contradiction, but in this case, it was easy to do by contradiction. All right, so finite extensions are algebraic, but algebraic extensions are only finite uh, sometimes. <laughs> Definitely they're finite if they're generated by finite set of elements. And that, that is usually the case when you wanna study these things. So, okay, show that this field is a, not a finite extension. This field is just bigger. So 
you can it, it also has no chance of being a finite extension. All right. Um, are there any questions? Yell at the yell at the computer now, and maybe I'll hear them. Now, email me or something. Uh, so moving on to the last um, paragraph in this section. Am I lying? No. It is the last paragraph. So uh, the book just goes on and talks briefly about algebraic closure. So, um, so probably you know what algebraic closure means. Um, so I want to talk about what happens when you you have a field. Can you add all algebraic elements um, to it, or can you can you always have the talk about fields which are algebraically close, which is fields where every polynomial has a root. Um, I hope that's a definition and not an equivalent thing. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> okay, so first let me, uh, let me start with this statement. Take an extension. Think of, I mean, it could be a finite extension, but that's that's going to be silly in this case. Think of the, the the complex numbers containing the rationals. The set of elements of the big field, which are algebraic, um, forms a subfield of E. Uh, and of course, it contains f because anything in a field is algebraic. Um, any a is the root of x minus a. So this means, for example, that the let's write it down the the set of complex numbers that are algebraic. If you say algebraic without saying, putting, saying a field afterwards, everyone understands over Q. But if you say an algebraic number, this is what everyone thinks you're, you mean. But this set is a field. So, um, well, I need to do something as a field. So. Let alpha and beta in E uh, take two of these algebraic elements. I need to show that alpha plus beta, alpha minus beta, alpha times. I need to show that I can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Probably even show that. I mean, if I show these, I know that one and zero must be in in in, in the field. So if I if I show that all of these are algebraic, then I'm done. Then you add two algebraic things, you get an algebraic thing, you multiply them, you get something algebraic. And oof, I mean, think about how you would prove this without, like this is gonna be easy to prove with like the linear algebra stuff we're using. Um, but without it, you would have to go like, say you have the minimal polynomial of alpha or a polynomial that has alpha as a root, and say you have the minimal polynomial of beta, try to find the minimal polynomial of the product somehow. Oof. That's doable, but it's so painful. It's just very painful. I think we don't have to do it uh, this way. So look at the extension. Did I just close it? No, I didn't. Look at the extension that alpha and beta generate. Um, which is, of course, contained in E. This is an algebraic extension. Um, well, yeah. 
why isn't algebraic like expansion? It is, but let me say why. Um, this is an extension which is generated by a finite set, basically by like two things, and they're both algebraic. Right? I said, let alpha beta be algebraic. So they got to be algebraic. Um, it is a finite extension because we know the one thing we know about finite extensions is that you get them when you add uh, a finite set of algebraic elements to any given field, which is exactly what I did here. I added two. Um, so that is the one thing I know. The other one thing I know about algebraic extensions um, is that they are finite, they are algebraic. Since the extension is finite, the extension is algebraic. Um, so this means that anything in it is algebraic. So what are things that I can find in this in this field? Well, it's a field, so it's closed under addition, multiplication, division. Um, and that is all I wanted. Notice how I, I keep using just the same two things over and over. Uh, finite extensions are always algebraic is a thing I use in basically every theorem. Um, things generated by a finite set of algebraic elements are finite extensions. I just keep using those things over and over. Everything I discover linear algebra. That's, that's all I'm doing. So this took no work. Um, so if you think of, you know, if you think of, of the problem of finding the minimum polynomial of this number, which is definitely algebraic, It's just, it's just miserable. This is a three, but it doesn't matter. It's miserable anyway. Um, but I just showed, I mean, this is definitely in the field. This is definitely in the field generated by these algebraic numbers. So it's definitely an, a, a, an algebraic element. So maybe, maybe I don't need to find a minimal polynomial. Maybe I only need to know that it has one. I, and I'm pretty sure it has one. And I could even tell you what what is the largest degree it could have just based on the degrees here two three four and two probably has degree has degree that divides 48 um just by multiplying these degrees and knowing uh knowing that if you if you combine extensions of degrees multiply uh Linear algebra is fantastic. I feel like I said that every five minutes, and I also feel like that's not enough repeating it. <clears throat> All right, so uh, the most important thing here is that the set of algebraic numbers over the rationals form a field. So um, let me actually talk about algebraic closure. We say, probably seen this definition um, before, but we say a field is algebraically close. If um, every polynomial that should have a root, so constants are not supposed to have roots, But every other polynomial has a chance of having a root. We know it has a chance; it has a root in some extension, but it already has a root in the field. Uh, so an example. 
So this is the fundamental theorem of algebra, which I would bet that you don't know how to prove. Um, it's it's hard. Um, and it's very important and you should know it, but it takes some work to prove it because I mean, it's all the complex numbers. It requires knowing something. It's not, <laughs> it's not a theorem of algebra. You need, you, it's not a theorem that's possible to prove just using algebra because the complex numbers are not defined just as an algebraic thing. They have, um, they have limits and topology and you, uh, they are complex analysis or something. You gotta use something of those things to prove it. Um, but the complex numbers are algebraically closed. Okay. Um, probably not gonna get around to proving that in this course. <clears throat> okay, so what can we say about algebraically closed fields? Um, I should I should say um, corollary. Yeah. So, um, we call um, the, so now we know that it's a field of complex numbers. Algebraic over, uh, over Q. So the field of fully complex numbers, which are algebraic over Q is called the field of algebraic numbers. Um, and we write it um, Q bar. So, um, let me show that Q bar is algebraically closed. So I'm gonna use the fundamental theorem of algebra uh, that I'm sort of taking as a black box for now, or maybe for the whole course. So if you take you take the rational numbers and you take everything algebraic over that. And what I'm saying is if you take that field with all those algebraic numbers, there's nothing algebraic over that field that you didn't already add. Um, so well, let's, let's see. Uh, we need to show that every polynomial has a root. So um, take a polynomial, it, it has to have a root. Uh, we need to show that the root is an algebraic number. Uh, I mean, we need to, that's, that's what we are trying to show. Uh, what, what I know, uh, the coefficients of this polynomial Um, there are algebraic numbers, but that just means there are special kind of complex numbers. So this is a polynomial with complex coefficients. Um, so the by the fundamental theorem of algebra, there exists some complex number that has, that is a root of this element, um, that is a root of this polynomial. So I need to show that alpha is actually algebraic over Q. 
<clears throat> so um, how do we show that? Uh, it's not, I mean, it's not clear. It's not that clear, honestly. Um, so let F be the polynomial. So we can assume it's monic just by multiplying by a unit doesn't doesn't change the fact that it has a root. And the coefficient, the coefficients are going to be algebraic numbers. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the extension of, of Q generated by these coefficients. Um, which is these coefficients, they're all contained in Q bar by the definition of the polynomial. And we're going to look at what happens when you, let's just call this E. When you add alpha as well. Uh, oh, I'm going to use the, the same arguments I use all the time. Um, so Look at here. Look at look at this. All all of these are algebraic over Q because they are in Q bar. But that's by definition of what Q bar is. And and there's a finite number. And this means that the extension of of Q that is E is a finite extension um, because it's generated by a finite number of algebraic things, which is the thing we showed on one thing. Uh, and now if you look at this other extension, guess what I'm going to say? Alpha is algebraic. I don't know if it's algebraic over Q, it's algebraic over E because F of alpha is zero. And this is F. F has coefficients that are definitely in E. And for the same exact same reason, the, the degree of E of alpha over, over E is finite. And now I have two finite extensions. Um, so what do you get when you put two finite extensions together? That's the other thing we proved. Would you get a finite extension? Um, finite, though it may be, it doesn't fit in the page. So this is E. So both extensions are finite. And we know that we, we when we compose two finite extensions, we get a finite extension as well. We even know that the degree is the product of the two degrees. But that's not useful because we don't know anything about the other two degrees I'm talking about. So, so now I have a finite extension. So alpha is algebraic over Q. Uh, since it is an element of a finite extension. So alpha is in Q bar. Uh, that was, that's what I was trying to prove. I was, so let's go back. Let's recap. I was trying to show that if you take a polynomial, you take a polynomial, I'm trying to show that Q bar is algebraically closed. I said, you take a polynomial, um, try to show that it has a root. What I know is that for sure it has a complex root, alpha. I want to show that alpha is algebraic over Q. I showed that I, ma I made this extension up, and I showed that it's made of two finite extensions, so itself is finite, and that makes it algebraic over Q. And being algebraic over Q is, by definition, the same thing as being in Q bar. So now you know two algebraically closed fields, the complex numbers and the algebraic numbers. And 
they're not they're not the same because uh, there's much many more complex numbers. Um, pi is not an algebraic number, even though who knows why I don't remember. All right, uh, I'm gonna leave it there. I'll see you Wednesday. Goodbye.